After the introduction of the Euro Germany, the, actually the Germany made lots of profits because at that time the Germany was the developed country, so their original currency marks are more expensive than the Euro and this means the high value. So after that, the, their competitiveness went up and finally the current account surplus. However, the Greece was the developing country, so their original currency, drachma, was low, the cheaper currency and low value currency than the euro. So after the introduction of the euro, the, their export competitiveness went down and this contributes to the current account deficit. The actual purpose of the joining the EU and, the, and the adopting the euro as their new currency for Greece is to boost the investment. And in fact, uh, because the Greece is the developing country, so they need a lot of money to establish their infrastructures. So, and after the few years it worked, because the interest rate of the Greece is decreased and many people invest their money for Greece. However, the, after a few years later, the, it revealed its failed because the Greece actual Greece original drachma was appreciated and also the it is natural that when the currency was appreciated the inflation rate should be decreased. But in this case the drachma was low value currency so their inflation rate steeply sold. And after that the, also their export competitiveness also went down. And the Greek government should decide the decisions to increase their labor, labor cost of the officials. But, but it didn't work, so the Greek, Greek final decision is to learn money from uh, ECB with low inflation in, interest rates. And <coughs> Greece is continually borrow the money from the ECB. The second reason is the wrong price correction by European Union. Uh, when 2008, the global financial crisis uh, happened, the Greek economy has hit far harder than other countries because of the huge deficit in the bank. <coughs> when 2009, the Turkey European uh, Commission, European Central Bank, and IMF uh, decide to give help to the Greek. Uh, so uh, they give 110 billion European bail out loan to the Greek, but with a serious street condition, such as collecting more taxes, uh, decreasing labor costs, and uh, targeting the budget. Under these conditions, people stop the spending money, and the unemployment rate grows, and the uh, Credit rating was downgrade. Finally, the economy slowed down. The third reason is the unfair service and the populism. According to this graph, the orange um, portion is uh, public uh, expenditure is account for twenty two percent of the GDP, and the green <coughs> portion is the family and the labor. Uh, welfare expenditure is account for uh, 3% of the GDP. This means the government just uh, focus on spending money on public uh, defense, uh, education, and the public uh, security. So when the soldiers, uh, teachers, and the public service retired from their work, they will receive the retirement uh, is 80% of their wages. At the same time, the, uh, many people who really need help can't get the high welfare. And the, the Greek party retail or old in European Union uh, ranks at the highest level in the European Union. The 
80% of the total population are below the poverty line. As a result, the uh, government easily connect with the public servant by populism. The first cause is tax evasion and corruption. Uh, the Greek government has been trouble in collecting taxes. There are some funny story about swimming pool. The Greek rich people like to have a swimming pool in their own house, but they have to pay tax about 500 euro. So then they just reported about 324 swimming pools. Then government dumb and ask Google Earth to take a satellite photo. But amazingly, there were over 16,000 swimming pools in North Athens. Then tax evasion also lead to shadow economy. It also called underground economy and black economy. Uh, and that escaped the dictation in official estimate of GDP. See, the Greece is the top of shadow economic countries in Euro area, and it count about, for about 24% of Greek GDP. If shadow, shadow, shadow economy was continued, Greek, Greek governments should, uh, can be able to fight corruption. The last main cause is excessive government spending. The Greek government spending is much higher than <coughs> ta collected taxes. Even they spend money for the rich people and military system. <coughs> Let's look at this graph. The Greek government's expenditure was usually higher than their revenue. And you know, anything about this amount, it has to borrow. And it causes also deficit spending. Deficit spending was increasing until 2009. It made a financial loss. And then after first bailout, it was decreasing a uh, little bit because of the austerity ma measure. Um, and then Greek government well, has spent enormous budget on defense. For example, the Greek government spent a lot of money for the buying military system, about 700 million euro worth from the Germany and France during the worst years. And defense spending to GDP also Greece ranked third. Uh, what did the Greek government spend money for? The big parts are uh, national defense and social security and income security. Uh, the national defense, as I mentioned before, it means military, so the Greek government spent a lot of money for this part, and security, social security and income security is relative uh, welfare, but the main point is major recipients are the, key, uh, the high position people like teacher, judge, and official servant, so it also relates with corruption. Our presentation about the economic and social impact of the crisis. First, uh, Greece GDP and GDP per capita has fell down. Uh, on the contrary, uh, unemployment rate and public debt to GDP has rise. I will explain by the uh, use graph. Uh, the first graph, uh, first graph will show the Greece GDP. Uh, Greece GDP has Pay, pay down uh, 354 billion dollars in in 2008 uh, to to 237 
billion dollars in 2014. Uh, also, uh, GDP per capita also fell down. But on unemployment rate and uh, risen from 10% to 25%. <coughs> and uh, public debt to GDP also has risen uh, from 2008. Crisis economic, uh, economic crisis caused many social problems. Uh, for example, Greece suicide rate, Greece suicide rate has been increased. So now Greece has a uh, high, high increase, uh, high suicide rate in Europe. Second, uh, so uh, many Greek people lost their home. Uh, I will talk about the solution of the crisis. Greece uh, choose the third bank uh, So as a result, Greece can take up uh, 86 billion euro, but. Greece have to sell their access to the private sector for the payback. The second solution is Greece. Greece means the uh, leave the eurozone. Greece leave the eurozone. Uh, so if Greece leave the eurozone, they they get uh, the devaluation of, devaluation of the currency. So. Greece can boost their export. The cost of the devaluation of the currency, they can pay down its debt with a cheaper currency. Thank you. Okay, so uh, <coughs> what is the most important cause of the crisis in Greece? Government spending and, and, evasion, and also austerity, austerity and government spending. So, which one? Just tell me which. Is, what do you think is the most important I cause and why? Government spending because in Greece there are lots of corruptions and tax evasions and this caused the this kind of crisis. Okay. <coughs> and then, do you have any? data about the competitiveness? Yes, we have, but not in this slide. Uh, let's see. All right, so thank you. So then group five. <coughs> No way, way. Came I wrong? advantages, disadvantages of Chinese uh, managing food exchange rate regime. That is our conclusion. I'm going to talk about history of Chinese exchange rate regime. Before the, before the opening, China depended on <coughs> Chinese government, <coughs> government has plan and plan and distribution of distribution of 
Foreign, foreign policy means month. After the opening from 1978 to 1993, they are China used double exchange rate regime. Double exchange rate regime means they used 14 and 6 exchange rate, rate, rate regime. They used 14 exchange rate regime on financial trade and they used fixed exchange rate regime on commercial trade. In 1994, they, in 1994, they decided to unify a double exchange rate regime and, and change it to manage a floating exchange rate regime. But in 1997, there was the Asian, Asian, Asian economic crisis, so China wanted to <coughs> protect the yen. So um, Chinese government of peg, ma maintained a peg of 8.27 yuan per USA dollar. This, until 2005, this part is like that. It looks like fixed exchange le regime. And then July in 2005, they, they changed it to Manage exchange, manage floating exchange rate regime based on multi multi currency basket system. Multi currency basket system means they when they when they decide to when they decide to exchange exchange rate regime exchange rate, uh, they consider uh, they consider. Uh, they consider of uh, average of value more than two countries' currency value and domestic inflation rate. Next is advantages of managing floating exchange rate. I will analyze the advantage of China's many floating exchange rate region. First of all, we must know that any policy of any country will benefit themselves from it, <coughs> and the policy will must be in keeping with the country's base condition and stage. As we all know, China has a large population and serious uh, priority gap. Um, and China should create many employment for its large population. And the unemployment rate of China in 2014 is 4% to 4.3%. Um, and the people from Western China is also a huge problem. To solve this problem, China should create many employment uh, employment opportunities. And uh, um, if, chi um, if China use many float exchange regime, the currency of China is undervalued. Because of cheap labor and cheap land, more than one investor will invest in China. And in this case, the investor will create many employment opportunities for Chinese people and also promote Chinese we all know that uh, the industrial structure of China um, is, uh, is still in mature and in process of transformation. Uh, the, uh, now in China, the primary industry and secondary industries they all hold a, a large portion. Um, and China should uh, use, uh, use many float exchange rate regime to protect their own industry and companies. Uh, because, of the, because of the cheap um, cheap price of Chinese product. Many um, uh, many countries from the world will import from China, and China will uh, export the, a lot uh, a lot amount of primary product to protect their own companies and the industry. Um, and secondly, um, the managed float exchange rate regime is stable because China's central bank will also enter in the uh, in entering the interest rate. Um, for example, during the big crisis, um, China also has a 7.1% increase in GDP, but at the same time, many countries from the world, include, included America, has a big problem with their economy. Um, for rest of the world, uh, as we all know, China is one of the most important training partners 
for many com for many countries. Um, because China uses many float exchange rate regime, um, and China bring out the devaluation of RMB. Uh, other countries can use less money to buy more product that made in China to pro to improve their own economy. Uh, and also, China is changing their exchange rate regime from fixed to managed float exchange rate regime. And in the future, China will change to floating exchange rate region, but it is a uh, uh, slow process. China wants to, uh, China government is keeping managing floating exchange rate region. But China money has devalued. China should reserve maintain this management and manage value for China's money. Manage floating exchange rate regime can cause imbalance of international payment. When it happens, China should control its fiscal policy. Manage floating exchange rate Regimes can cause conflict with trade deficit country, especially U.S. When 2009, U.S. gave a excessive trade of to China's tire. This case go to WTO. Why China keeps the energy protein exchange rate regime? A similar situation can be happen with UK3. I'm going to talk about our conclusion. Uh, our conclusion is that uh, China is better to use managed float exchange rate regime in the short term, and then uh, it's better to use float exchange rate in the long term. Because if China change their exchange rate rapidly, then it will cause the crisis of China's economy. So they should change their uh, their exchange rate regime to Float exchange rate regime slowly, then it will help the Chinese economy, even the international economy, by changing the way of the uh, way of the growth from from form of save to form of expense. Uh, this is our sources, and thank you, thank you for your listening. Okay, so uh, the first question is, can you explain a little bit more about the balance of payments and balance? You had some slide about that. Mm -hmm. Went through quite quickly. Yes. yes. What kind of explain? So just, you didn't really explain about what you meant here. You have some information on the slide, but you didn't explain about the information. <coughs> Can you explain about the information? <coughs> hmm? what, does the, what does the information mean on the slide? I understand like this, so I don't know about You don't know about that information? Okay, and then the second question, uh, <clears throat> what about, uh, what can China do in the meantime? What other things can China do apart from, you, what you said they should keep the managed flow exchange rate for the moment, so what other things can China do to, to keep the other countries happy or to decrease the imports and exports in balance? What other kinds of things can China do? apart from the exchange rate.
except they keep managed float exchange rate, China can Do you understand the question? Yeah. Mm. Can you explain one more? China is going to keep, you say China should keep the managed float system and slowly get the stronger currency, right? Yeah. But in the meantime, what other things can China do to keep the other countries happy? Mm. Maybe the US is not happy because they think they have a very big, US has, a, you showed on your slide, the export and imports is a very big difference. So apart from the exchange rate, what other things? can China do? China can limit their exports and then mm. invest their import company or product. Okay. So encourage the imports. All right, so thank you. So then let's take a